Dios es amor. Dios es amor. Y el que vive amor vi en Dios y Dios en él. Chapter 26 of Genesis. Capítulo 26 de Génesis. Versículo 17 en adelante. Y luego estaré tocando otra escritura también en el desarrollo de este mensaje. Génesis 26, 17 en adelante. Génesis 26, 17. Dice la palabra del Señor así. E Isaac se fue de allí y asentó sus tiendas en el valle de Gerar y habitó allí. Y volvió a abrir Isaac los pozos de agua que habían abierto en los días de Abraham, su padre, y que los filisteos habían cegado, muerto Abraham. Y llamólos por los nombres que su padre los había llamado. Y los siervos de Isaac cavaron en el valle y hallaron un pozo de aguas vivas. Y los pastores de Gerar rinieron con los pastores de Isaac, diciendo, El agua es nuestra. Por eso llamó el nombre del pozo Esec, porque habían altercado con él. Y abrieron otro pozo y también rinieron sobre él, y llamó su nombre Sidna. Y apartóse de allí y abrió otro pozo, y no rinieron sobre él, y llamó su nombre Rehobot, y dijo, porque ahora nos ha hecho ensanchar Jehová, y fructificaremos en la tierra. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Jerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdsmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Amen. Quisiera entitular este mensaje, Reabriendo los Pozos Antiguos. I would like to name this sermon, Reopening Ancient Wells. You may be seated. Young people, we have been blessed this week. And God has delivered us from many things. The first night we killed horses. And then we got close to Jesus. And then we confessed and cleansed our heart last night. And there was such a beautiful spirit here. Dios nos ha bendecido esta semana, hermanos. Para los que no estuvieron aquí, la primera noche matamos algunos caballos. Y la segunda noche nos acercamos muy, muy cerca a Jesucristo. Y anoche confesamos pecados y pusimos nuestra vida ante la mesa para que Dios la analizara y limpiara de nosotros todo lo que necesita salir, todo lo que nos sirve ahí en nuestra vida. Y en esta noche vamos a reabrir algunos pozos antiguos. Alguien diga, ¡Gloria a Dios! You see... The unbeatable church is going to leave this camp claiming and shouting victories, for we have had them. The presence of the Lord has been strong here. And let me say this, 
because it's true. That's the only reason. I've preached in many, many camps. And there is one in particular that sticks out in my mind that I preached two years ago, I believe. It was very powerful, very powerful. And next to that, this camp has been very, very powerful. And I thank the Lord for that because it is His doings. But because we are the unbeatable church does not mean that we will not have a fight. We will not go home without battles awaiting us over there. When you get to your local church, you're going to be ready to dance and ready to worship the Lord. And take my word for it, there's going to be somebody there already with a bucket of ice cold water to dump it right on you. Okay? Don't get a bitter spirit and don't get upset. We are the unbeatable church. And we, we assume the minute that we gave our life to the Lord and became soldiers of Jesus Christ, we assume that there's going to be battle after battle after battle until we get over on the other side. But we have nothing to fear for the Lord is with us. Something happened very strange in the times of Isaac and Abraham. And last year, Brother Wisar and myself and a few other people, we were in the Holy Land. And we were traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And the, the guy stopped the bus. And he pulled the bus, pulled over a little bit to the edge. And he said, take out your cameras. And over on a little valley, Sister Wisar was there also, there were some tents. Old tents, frail looking, almost torn and old. And the guide told us, those people are called Bedouins. And they live in an, in an administrative area where they are neither Jordanian nor Israel. They are nomads that travel in the deserts following their flocks. And they're very strange people. One of the things that makes them strange is that they don't take a shower. They don't bathe themselves. Mm, I believe we may have a Bedouin or two in here in this camp. I don't know. But uh, that's that was very strange. And another strange thing was that each Bedouin is allowed to have four wives. That's real strange. I don't know how they do it. It's very. It must be very difficult. So... With every Bedouin having four wives, there was four tents for every man. And he could go to any tent that he wants. Those are his wives. And with a lot of Bedouins, there's a lot of wives. And when there's a lot of wives, there's a lot of kids. So they come running out to the bus asking for money. And if you don't give them money, they throw rocks at the bus. So it wasn't our bus, <laughs> so we didn't give them any money. And the reason that these people don't use water is because... The water is scarce in the deserts. And uh, they use it to drink and they use it for the bare necessities. And they're not going to waste it on taking a shower. And our guide, whose name was Gershon, who speaks five languages and is a very, very interesting person, he said that in order to finish his thesis at the University of, of Jerusalem, he went and lived with the Bedouins for approximately four weeks. And he, he went in there and he said, of course, it stinks very much at first, but then you get used to it, like the boys' cabins and other things. You, you, you become used to it. <laughs> Somebody say, praise the Lord. And so we, the, the bus drove on and, and Gershon said, does that remind you of anybody? Does that, does that open up any thinking, any thought in your heads? And we all, well, I don't know. He said, that's exactly the way Abraham and Isaac and Jacob used to live. They, the book of Hebrews says that they look for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. But they would go from one place to another following their flocks, and then after, following the voice of God wherever He directed them. Hermano, lo que, lo que estoy diciendo es que... Uh, hablando de Isaac y de Jacob en la escritura que leímos el año pasado estuvimos en, en Palestina eh, los hermanos Wizard estuvieron y algunos otros hermanos y mientras íbamos de Jerusalén a Jericó el autobús se paró al, al lado de la carretera y el guía nos dijo miren allí y estaban unas carpas muy, muy feas, muy viejas, muy gastadas 
y nos comenzó a explicar que en esas carpas vivían una tribu que se llaman los beduinos. Y hay algunas características muy extrañas que tienen los beduinos. Unas de ellas que no usan el agua para bañarse o no se bañan, porque el agua es tan um, escasa en el desierto, la usan solamente para tomar. Otra característica extraña es que cada hombre puede tener cuatro mujeres. And, y, y algo más que nos dijo, and this is very, very interesting, and, and, and it's kind of scared us. They said that if they catch a couple committing fornication, they kill them. And since they're not Israel and they're not Jewish, they're kind of under no supervision there, and they follow those strange laws. They, they fear a God of some kind, and, and probably Jehovah. Así que, así como viven estas personas, así es como vivía Isaac, Abraham, Isaac y Jacob. Y estos hombres andaban por los desiertos y cuando se les escasaba el agua, lo que tenía que hacer Abraham es excavar pozos, cavarlos y sacar el agua de muy abajo para saciar la sed. Pero algo sucede cuando Abraham muere y deja aquellos pozos, Isaac era un niño, Isaac era un jovencito que se crió al lado de su padre. Y yo quiero tocar algunos puntos en esta noche. ¿Cuántos de ustedes nacieron en el Evangelio? ¿Ustedes se acuerdan de las cosas antiguas que había en la iglesia? Algunas de ellas muy bonitas, a otras de ellas no tan bonitas, pero nos acordamos. Yo, me, yo nací en el Evangelio. Algunas personas se enojan cuando decimos que nacimos en la iglesia. Bueno, yo ya mero nací en la iglesia, a lo que me cuentan. Apenas le hizo mi mamá al hospital, ya mero nací en la iglesia. Y nosotros, como Isaac, él se acordaba que Abraham había cavado pozos. Y se acordaba que en su niñez, él iba y después de andar jugando cerca de las carpas, después de andar corriendo allí con sus hermanos o con sus amigos, él se acordaba lo sabroso que sabía el agua cuando se ha llegado a un pozo que su mismo padre había acabado, sus siervos, y tomaba el agua. Y en una ocasión, cuando Abraham muere y la responsabilidad patriarcal queda sobre Isaac, él viene por la tierra de Gerar, donde los pozos antiguos de su padre estaban pero algo terrible había sucedido. I want you to pay attention to the word of God now. Isaac remembered the things and the, the wells that his father had dug. He remembered when he was a young little boy running around in the dusty deserts, how when thirst would hit him in the middle of a game or in the middle of working, he would run to those wells and say, my father dug this well, I can drink water from here. And he would drink from that. But something happened after Abraham is out of the picture and Isaac now has the patriarchal responsibility. Something happens. One day he's traveling back through the land of Gerar and he says, hey, I remember. How many of you like to go back where, where you were a little kid? Well, some of you are still little kids, so you can't go back there. But uh, you, those of us that are married, los que estamos casados, nos gusta ir allá donde nos criamos, ¿verdad? Y enseñarle aquí, mira mijo, aquí tu papá era bien malo y le decimos un montón de mentiras, no es cierto, ¿verdad? Aquí, ¿ves eso? Yo hice esto y, y lo llevamos a la escuela donde fuimos y y a mí me gusta llevar a mis niños y llevarlos. Mira, mijo, I used to live right there. You see that window right there? That's, I used to live right there. That was my bedroom when I was your age. And they look at it like, if, you know, it's something big. It's just a window. But their daddy lived there. And then I take them to the school. Look, son, see that fence? I used to hit the ball over that fence. And they believe me, you know. And it's, it's just great. They don't know. They weren't born. They got mad because we didn't invite them to the wedding. So we can tell them anything. So, Isaac had fond memories of his childhood, of his trekking through the deserts. He remembered the voice of Abraham and he remembered the look on his face when God would call him, when the Lord would speak to him. He knew that there was something going on when he would see his daddy go out alone in the desert and over that little hill and then he would hear him weeping and speaking to Jehovah the Almighty God. But something happens now. He's a grown-up man, Isaac is. And he comes to the land of Jerar, and he looks, 
and the wells that his father had dug up, something terrible had happened. The Philistines, the enemy, had come and they had filled them with dirt. My God, they're different now. They used to be green. There used to be a lot of flowers and plants around here. My, one night I even came out in the middle of the night when I got thirsty and there was a, there was a roar, or rather a row out there. There was a little deer eating and drinking some water there. And now he gets to those wells and they're dusty. And he looks inside and they're packed with dirt. And something came over Isaac and he said, this is no good. We've got to do something about this. And in the morning, he called his servants and he called his, his fellows and he says, we are going to reopen the wells that my daddy built. And that morning at five o'clock in the morning before the sun was even out, they started digging and taking that dirt out and he was angry. Isaac was angry. Who did this? Who plugged up these wells? Yo me acuerdo que de aquí salía agua cristalina. Yo recuerdo que de aquí me saciaba yo mi sed. ¿Quién hizo eso? Y alguien le dice, los filisteos, los enemigos, vinieron a tapar los pozos de donde salía el agua. Hermanos, el agua en la Biblia es tipo del Espíritu Santo. Por eso en nuestros cultos se mueve. Por eso Cristo dijo que a los que creyeren, como dicen las Escrituras, ríos de agua viva saldrán de su vientre. A Dios no le gusta que su pueblo esté sin agua o sin Espíritu Santo. Por eso nos ha sellado con el Espíritu Santo. And he, he has given you blessings in this camp. And you're going to go out home. And you're going to find out that a lot of things that you received, a lot of blessings that you received in this camp, a week later, a month later, a year later, the Philistine, the enemy, the Goliath, whatever you want to call him, he's going to come and try to put dirt on your experience. He doesn't want you to be worshiping God. He doesn't want you to be uh, praising his name and alive in the spirit. God wants you, the devil wants you dead. The devil wants you there barely serving God on Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes on Sundays. He wants you there to be mediocre, but I pray to God that tonight we reopen the wells that Abraham dug. And we need to, and I'm going to open, I'm going to open three wells tonight. Do you allow me? You got your shovels ready? Vamos a abrir unos pozos, hermanos, hasta que salga el agua. Hay algunos corazones quizás aquí que hace mucho tiempo que no gorgorea el agua. O sea, que no se goza usted en el Espíritu Santo. ¿Por qué está viviendo con las memorias de hace 30 años? ¿Por qué está viviendo que usted antes era muy espiritual? ¿Por qué no lo es ahora? Si Dios es el mismo ayer y hoy por los siglos. Dios quiere que su agua, que su espíritu esté corriendo en su templo. God got so mad one time when the p children of Israel, they were over in, um, my word, I forget that place. They were drinking water and uh, they were in, uh, in, in Rephidim. Estaban en, Re en Refidim. And uh, that's when the water, Moses struck the, the rock and water came out. And see, the people were real thirsty. So they all ran and they forgot about everything else, about their swords and everything. And they started drinking water. And then the old Amaleks, they peeked over the rocks. Now, they're drinking water, their swords are down. And they came over and they attacked. And that's the time Moses went up and raised his hands with Aaron Aaron. And God says, you know what? You're going to beat these people. And many years later, he told Saul, 300 years later, he told Saul, I want you to go kill all of Amalek. I want you to destroy everything that they have. Because the Bible says, God remembered what Amalek did to his people. You know what? And I'm so glad that I belong to the unbeatable church, the unbeatable God. He doesn't forget what the devil tries to do. He doesn't forget when he tries to plug up the wells. God does not forget. And payday will come to those that are enemies of the cross. Payday will come. I'm glad I'm on the winning side tonight. I'm glad I'm on the unbeatable church. I'm glad I'm on Jesus' side tonight, this very night. Hermanos. Y nosotros necesitamos sacar cosas antiguas, cosas buenas de la antigüedad. Y una de ellas, el primer pozo que yo quiero abrir en esta noche con Isaac, es el pozo del entusiasmo para servirle a Dios. We need to reopen that well of enthusiasm to serve God. I remember when I was a little boy, the enthusiasm... Llegaban los hermanos 
al templo con, con su Biblia, sus himnarios. ¿Se acuerdan ustedes que usaban el himnario de gloria, el himnario de suplema alabanza, el himnario de consolación, melodías celestiales? Y llegaban ahí con sus himnarios y sus Biblias y con un entusiasmo. Llegaban temprano al culto, a los matutinos, le alababan a Dios, servían a Dios. Me acuerdo todavía cómo cantaban las hermanas con todo el corazón, las jóvenes, todos. Hermanos, necesitamos reabrir el pozo del entusiasmo. A Dios se le sirve con entusiasmo. A Dios se le sirve con espíritu. Y el filisteo le quiere hacer la misma cosa que hizo con los pozos de Abraham y con Isaac. Quiere taparlos. Quiere tenerlos callados. El diablo nos quiere tener allí criticándonos los unos a los otros. Ese brinca mucho. Ese baila mucho. Ese habla mucho en lengua. Usted déjelo que Dios lo está bendiciendo. Deje que Dios lo bendiga. Estamos y pertenecemos a la iglesia invencible. No está muerta la iglesia. Está llena del Espíritu Santo. Usted puede entrar a iglesias donde tienen ahí a Cristo muertos. Pues todo está muerto. Nuestro Cristo no está muerto. Él resucitó al tercer día. Sí. Él es el que es, el que era y el que ha de venir. El alfa y el omega, el principio y el fin. Él es el que vive, estuvo muerto. Pero ahora vive por todos los siglos. We have to serve God with enthusiasm. You say, well, Brother Sam, what's been going on in this camp? We have enthusiasm. Oh, yes. Yes, I've preached many camps, many camps. And then three weeks later, see, we go home tomorrow. How was camp? And we do a flip. Woo! We get in there. We want to we baptize everybody. Bring me all the demons in the world. I'll get all the I'll kill them right now. You, we come down from camp all strong. We're, come on, where are you? I'll show the pastor. Right. Oh. And then a week later, how was camp? It was good, man, it was good. No flip. <laughs> oh. And then two weeks later, how was camp? Camp? Oh, yeah, it was good. It's good. It's good. Pretty good. Choir. Choir was tremendous. Yeah. And then a month later, how was camp? Camp. Oh, yeah, it was all right. And as time goes on, we seem to lose that joy. Why? Does God get old? Do the blessings diminish? I want to warn you, young people. I want to warn you. You're going you're gonna to leave this camp with enthusiasm. And I'm going to say this again. A los que no entendieron en inglés. Cuando usted llegan a su iglesia, usted no van a ir a voltear allí a nadie, ni a cambiar cosas. Ni... Algunos de ustedes van a llegar y ya van a estar alguien con un balde de agua fría para echárselos. ¿Ok? No, no, más aquí eso sucede en todo. Yo he predicado desde Washington hasta California, hasta por donde quiera. Y eso sucede en todos lugares. Don't get discouraged. Don't let the Philistine plug up your well with dirt. Let the water keep flowing. You are, you are a fountain now because the Lord lives in you. Don't be discouraged. And don't be saying two months later, I remember how the Lord blessed me at camp. Oh, I just can't wait till next August. What are you going to do for 10 months? Ese pozo del entusiasmo, hermanos, todo lo tenemos que tener. Los viejos, los ancianos, los niños, todo necesitamos servirle a Dios con entusiasmo. La palabra entusiasmo en el griego quiere decir Dios adentro. The word enthusiasm in Greek means God within. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're all... No. When you serve God with enthusiasm, that means you serve God with God within. He is in you. Don't stop going to church. Don't stop going to the sunrise services. Don't stop cooperating. Don't think that we've reached the top. We have won one battle. But there are more to come. There are more to come. And we've got to stand up before that Philistine like David did. And we've got to say, you know what, buddy? You're not going to plug up this well. I'm going to keep springing forth with life. Trials are going to come. Van a venir pruebas, jóvenes. Van a venir luchas. Van a venir muchas de las cosas que aprendieron aquí. Las van a usar allá. Don't give up. You belong to the unbeatable church. Praise the Lord. You're all tired, huh? I'm not going to preach very long tonight. You don't believe me anymore. <laughs> There's another well I'm going to open tonight, just like Isaac. Isaac got there. He was angry. Who did this? My daddy did this. 
you know what? We receive this this experience from God. Many of us, we were we were born in Christian homes. And Isaac's sitting there with a little pick and shovel there. Hurry up, take that dirt out. Take the dirt out. Well, how come he's so mad? He, we always dig wells everywhere we go, but these were different. These, my father made them. My daddy made them. My father gave me this spirit. And nobody's going to take this enthusiasm away from me. Don't let the devil rob you. You know what's our strength? ¿Saben lo que es nuestro gozo, hermanos? Vamos a preguntarle a Nemia. A Nemias. Cuando venía el pueblo contra él. Y cuando venía Zorobabel. Y cuando venían otros para desanimarlo. Y, y Nemías estaba haciendo un muro y no se paraban todos aquí y decían, ¡Ah, no sabía hacer nada! Si se para una zorra arriba del muro se va a caer. Y todos los que estaban trabajando con Nemías estaban desanimados sin entusiasmo. Y luego Nemías se paraba arriba del muro como enseñándoles, ¡Mira, no se está cayendo! Y decía, ¡El gozo del Señor es nuestra fortaleza! ¡Yes! ¡Don't ever let anybody plug up that well of joy! That well of enthusiasm, because the, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You want to see a strong Christian, he's going to be a worshiping Christian. You want to see a strong Christian, he's going to be a praising Christian. He's going to praise when nobody else praises. He's going to praise in youth camp, and he's going to praise in December, and he's going to praise in March, and he's going to praise in May, and he's going to praise in the morning, and at noon, and at night. Every day I'm going to praise him, I'm going to worship him. Why? Because God within! Enthusiasm! Isaac sitting there taking that dirt out. And everybody, hey, what's out? You're spreading dirt. Get out of my way then. And he's taking dirt out. Está sacando tierra. And then somebody yells, how's it doing? And then you dig in there and they put a bucket down there with a rope and they're bringing it out. And finally somebody, Isaac's in there, hurry up, hurry up. And these guys are throwing dirt out. And then finally says, I hit water. I hit water. And pretty soon they could feel the gurgling and see the gurgling. And Isaac would jump up and down. Agua! Pegamos el agua! Hermanos, hay muchos corazones que tienen años con el pozo del entusiasmo y del gozo del Espíritu tapado, lleno de tierra. Usted le ha creído al filisteo, le ha creído al diablo, le ha creído tantas cosas. Y ahora su pozo, su noria, que en un tiempo saltaba para vida eterna con agua. Y se gozaba en los cultos y salía lloroso. Y salía con las narices todas llenas de agua y los ojos llorosos. Y salíamos con el corazón grande. Ahora, ¿qué pasó con ese gozo? El filisteo le tapó con tierra ahí. Y ahora le tienen que sacar un gloria a Dios con un gancho. Hermano, yo voy a predicar, yo me voy el domingo, así que yo voy a predicar la verdad. Don't lose it. I don't know your name, they call you Rambo, but don't lose it. Don't lose, don't lose that enthusiasm. Don't, don't let go of that. You boys that were dancing here in the spirit and you girls, don't lose that enthusiasm. Now, I'm not telling you to, to go dance on home. I'm not telling you to dance your way home. No. Keep that spirit alive. Hallelujah. Keep that enthusiasm alive. Don't let him come and put dirt on it. Don't let the devil come and put dirt on it. And, and pretty soon it was just a memory. Youth camp is just a memory. And, and sometimes we live from youth camp to youth camp to youth camp. How sad when we have a living God. Otro pozo que necesitamos reabrir, hermanos, de la antigüedad. Otro, otra cosa que vemos en, en Abraham que nos dejó como herencia es el pozo del temor de Dios. We have to continue and reopen the well of the fear of God. That doesn't mean you're afraid of God. It doesn't mean that He's a monster and you're shaking. Even though if you study the words fear in the Greek and in, its, in, all of its, in all of its renderings in the Greek, it means horror. It means shaking. It means that you're, that you're just shaking before the Lord. It doesn't mean just a reverent love of God. It means that we fear the Lord and His Word. And we're not going to do anything to break that vow that we have made with God. A muchos se nos está perdiendo el temor de Dios. We're losing that fear that we, that we had when we were barely converted. That, that, that fear of God, that respect to His Word. Oh, yo no puedo. Yo no puedo quebrar la palabra de Dios. Yo no puedo quebrantar los mandamientos de Dios. Yo no puedo hacer eso. Yo temo a Dios. Y cuando uno teme a Dios, respeta a sus autoridades. 
Hay hermanos como pastores tenemos muchas experiencias. We have a lot of experiences that, that you church you don't even know what your pastor goes through. Amen, pastors. You don't you don't have the slightest idea. When I wasn't a pastor, I had all the answers. If I was a pastor of this church, <laughs> yeah. When I was a pastor, I had all the answers until I put on the shoes that fit me a little big. You don't understand. You don't know what a pastor goes through. And when somebody comes to my office and starts telling me off or start, starts being rebellious, all they're telling me is that they don't have any fear of God. That's all they're saying. So, don't lose that fear of the Lord. Don't lose that respect. Don't let the devil come in and put it in. You see, the unbeatable church is going to have opposition. We have to fight. We're soldiers, man. Don't go sit on a cushion and, and smell the roses. We're soldiers. When you were baptized in Jesus' name, cuando usted se bautizó en el nombre de Jesucristo, usted se convirtió en un soldado. Ahora pelee la buena batalla. No, no se siente allí. Pelee, levántese. Teme a Dios. Tema a Dios. Él es nuestro capitán. Aleluya. Y ninguno que fue tomado como, como soldado se embaraza en los negocios de esta vida a fin de agradar a aquel que lo tomó. When you talk, when you talk back to your parents who are your authority or your pastor or anyone in authority, you are disrespectful and that's rebelliousness. And our rebelliousness is satanic. And that's the, that's the worst sin in the world. Rebellion and disobedience. So you make sure nobody plugs up that well of fear of God in your life. Algunos de nosotros pensamos que el llamado más alto que Dios nos ha dado es de ganar almas. No, ese es muy alto, pero no es el llamado más alto. Otros piensan que el llamado más alto es llevar la cruz de Cristo. Es muy alto ese llamado, pero no es el más alto. El llamado más alto que Dios nos ha dado es simplemente de obedecer. That's the highest calling. We think as a preacher... It's not preaching. I love to preach. That's my life. That's my job. That's my, that's everything uh, for me. But that's not my highest calling. Our highest calling is not to win souls, even though that's a high calling. Our very highest calling, young people, is to obey. And anybody that stands out of line with that biblical concept is rebellious and does not fear God. And your well that used to spring up for water is now packed with dirt. This is a goodbye sermon, you see? Hallelujah. See, I want you to take this home with you and put it to work in your local churches. Oh, I love when young people come up to me, Brother Wisa, say, Brother Sam, what do you need? Brother Sam, what do we need to do here? How can I help? Don't you ever think that your pastor is going to tell you, get out of here. Don't, if he does that, pray for him. But whenever somebody comes up to me and says, Brother, what can we do? How can I help? Where can I work? That shows he's got fear of God. He's not over there starting a church on his own. He's not over there messing up my congregation or the congregation that God's, it's God's, but he put it under my care. He's standing behind me. He fears the Lord. Paz de Cristo, hermanos. Quiero, quiero abrir otro pozo. Y quiero mencionar que vamos, vamos a tener oposición nosotros. El filisteo tiene tierra y le gusta tapar los pozos. Eso es su trabajo. Y él trabaja y él no duerme. Él de día y de noche está trabajando para tapar el entusiasmo, tapar el temor de Dios. Pero yo quisiera comenzar a cerrar este sermón corto diciendo que el tercer pozo que el diablo ha tapado ha tapado, es el pozo del amor love love of God now in the book of John in the 19th chapter Jesus was hanging on the cross and they had to take the bodies down because the next day was Sabbath and his body was all cut and bruised and beat They had riveted his back with 39 whip lashes, with a whip that was leatherish, and they would tie at the end of the whip glass 
rocks, pieces of metal, so that when that Roman soldier who was conditioned and trained especially to torture prisoners uh, would take that short whip. It wasn't a long whip like you would see a cowboy's whip. No, it was a short whip so it would take the full impact of the blow right on the back. And uh, when that whip would come and hit the back, that glass and that rock and that metal would delve itself into the flesh and then when he would pull it out, it would pull out pieces of flesh. And 39 times somebody did that to the back of our Lord Jesus Christ. Besides that, they put a crown of thorn on his head, on his head and you know all of that crucifixion story. Uh, lo que estoy diciendo es que el cuerpo de Jesús estaba en la cruz y ya era la víspera del sábado y tenían que bajarlo porque no podía estar allí en un día festivo o en un sábado el cuerpo. Entonces, vienen y les mandan decir a los soldados, miren ustedes si está muerto los tres, los dos ladrones y Jesucristo, miren ustedes, y si no están muertos, lo que hacían les quebraban las piernas. Y si estaban ahí agonizando ya en sus últimos suspiros, les metían por allí los brazos y sabían ellos quebrar las piernas. Y ese último dolor y estrago causaba la muerte en los prisioneros. Y llegaron con uno de los de los ladrones y le quebraron las piernas y llegaron con otro ladrón y le quebraron las piernas y luego llegan con Jesús y ya estaba muerto y no le quebraron las piernas porque ya el profeta lo había dicho que ningún hueso de su cuerpo sería quebrado hermanos nosotros somos el cuerpo de Jesucristo We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Y vamos a tener en el cuerpo heridas, laceraciones, chicotazos. Vamos a tener pruebas y luchas, sangre y dolor. Pero tenemos que confiar que nunca nos van a quebrar los huesos. Porque somos la iglesia invencible del Señor Jesucristo. We are going to have lacerations. The body, which is the church, we're going to have problems. We're going to have to fight against the Philistine, trying to uh, plug up our well. We're going to have to do that. But we are the unbeatable church. And just like his body had lacerations and had blood and had pain, we are his body and we are crucified with Christ. We don't live anymore. Christ lives in us. Enthusiasm. Christ lives with us. And we're going to have pain and blood and we're going to have sweat and tears. But never fear, the unbeatable church will never get a bone broken. In other words, the spinal cord. In other words, the strength of the church will always be intact. Because we belong to the unbeatable church. But in order for us to have the victory and to really be unbeatable, we are going to have to unplug that well of love. Hermanos, no le hace que tantos nosotros diezmemos. No le hace que tanto nosotros oremos. No le hace que tanto nosotros brinquemos. No le hace que tantos tamales hagamos. No le hace que tanto actividad haya. Si no tenemos amor, nos vamos a ir al infierno. La Biblia nos dice que el que no ama a su hermano o el que aborrece a su hermano, es un homicida. Es un homicida. The Bible says if you don't love your brother, if he that hated his brother is a murderer and there and he has no eternal life in him. But brother, you don't know what they did to me. But I do know what they did to Jesus and none of his bones were broken. But brother, you don't know that The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that we need to love one another. We need to get together, church. You know, when we're playing basketball out there, you don't, you don't start fighting against you, guarding your own man. You, you don't start. When, when your man's got a clear shot, you don't go up and block his shot. Do you? Or when, or when you're, somebody on your team hits a pop fly, you don't go catch it. Right? 
And have you ever seen an army that, that they get their cannons and, and they, they start shooting each other? Why do we think it's okay in the church then? To shoot each other. To kill each other. To talk about each other. To fight with each other. I don't care what. If we don't love, we're not going to hell. We're not going to heaven. We're going to hell. Let me tell you something. And I'm going to open up my heart. I, I don't do this very much, but I feel doing, like doing it tonight. And this is shameful to me. But the Lord has, the Lord has given me the victory. For four years, I lived, listen to me now, ministers listen. For four years, I lived with hate in my heart. Against somebody that had done me wrong, real wrong. And then after that, I, that, he, that, that person did wrong to me, he would mock me in my face and there was nothing I could do because he was my authority and for four years I preached in youth camps and God would bless and that just shows me his love and his grace for me for four years I traveled around all over the world preaching conventions preaching camps going here and there and God would use me. And I would kneel down and, 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 and then that thought would come. How can you preach with so much hate in your heart? One time, I was already pastoring. You see, pastors are human. I was already pastoring the church that I'm pastoring right now. And I would try, I would try to take that out of my heart, that root of bitterness. Yo trataba de sacar esa, esa raíz de amargura de mi corazón y no podía. You know how hate is? Hate is from the devil. You see, because if I hate this person, and then this person comes and bees her friend, I also hate that person now. That's true. That's why I can preach it because I lived it. When somebody would come and be a friend to that person, I would not only hate that person, I would start hating that person. And then when that person, when I would see that person in a service or someplace, it would just come up. And I would have to leave. I had to leave. Out of the room. Out of the area. When that person would come over my house, I wouldn't be there. And it was just something... And then slowly, I felt myself sinking, sinking, God, I love you, God. I love my ministry, God. I love your church, God, but please, and I would try on a human. There's some mean people out there in the world. There's some mean people out there in the church. And they're going to lacerate you. They're going to whip you. But they can't break your bones. And you know what? Sometimes those mean people are us. A veces esas personas somos nosotros. So I would try, I would say, okay, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to see that servant, ser that person in that service. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to love. I'm going to love. And I'd get there and I couldn't. That thing just comes up like a serpent. Just comes up there and it just got a hold of you. And I was preaching, and I was teaching, and I was baptizing, and I was doing. And now that I'm free of that, I thank the Lord for His grace. I says, oh God, I can't understand the way you would, you would sometimes use even me. So what I did one day, I preached a sermon on love. And I knelt down after I preached, and everybody was crying in the altar and everything. And I don't know if it was God or the devil or me or I don't know. But it just said, how in the world, you big hypocrite. How can you preach like that when you yourself have all that hate? You, you, you're the one that needs this sermon. That week we started a prayer chain. And it was my turn from 5 to 6 every morning. And my prayer that week was God. I told God, Señor, Yo ya no puedo con esto. 
este mal que me hicieron, esta, que yo pensaba. Ahora, cuando lo veo, no era tanto, era yo. Era yo. Es que Dios está abusando eso para formarme a mí. Ahora que miro para atrás, no era tanto, pero allá era mucho. Y le comencé a pedir al Señor, Señor, yo he tratado humanamente y no puedo. Señor, y me siento que me estoy hundiendo en este odio. Sea lo que sea, Señor, yo sé que no debo de odiar, yo sé que debo de amar. Y yo sé todos los textos. El mensaje que prediqué esa, no, esa noche antes se llamó homicidas apostólicos. Y saqué una lista de todos los homicidas grandes que han ido en los Estados Unidos y prediqué y todo. Y yo era. Y me puse a orar y le dije, Señor, yo ya no puedo más, yo ya no puedo. Tú me tienes que ayudar. Y oré esa mañana, y oré el martes, y era mi mismo clamor, y, y no podía, no podía. Hermanos, el sábado en la mañana, como a las cinco y media de la mañana, yo sentí que como dos manos entraron a mi corazón y, y sacaron aquello. Y levanté las manos a Dios y me sentí muy diferente, me sentí libre. Y me senté en la mesa mientras mi esposo y mis hijos dormían. Y me puse a escribirle una carta a esa persona. Pidiéndole perdón por mi actitud. Pidiéndole perdón por cómo yo me había portado. Pidiéndole perdón. Hermanos, y desde ese día en adelante, hace como dos años, esa persona y yo somos los mejores amigos. Y ahora soy libre de eso. Soy libre. Pero duré, duré una semana para cavar el pozo antiguo de, del amor. Sacar la tierra. No me diga que no le puede pasar, pastor. Me pasó a mí. You know what? Maybe that person that, that, that's causing you so many problems, maybe God put him there to mold you, to test you. We pray, God, give me patience and give me love. He's not going to do that by sending you a valentine. He's going to do it by putting you in a situation where you need love, where you need patience. And I feel that we need to love. We need to love. And maybe in this building tonight, there are some people that need to hug. And say, you know what, brother, if I don't love you, I'm going to hell no matter how good I am. If I don't love you, no matter what I do and how many souls I win, they may go in, but I won't go. And we try to ignore these things. And these sermons, they kind of bother us. And we kind of wish we hadn't come. And we kind of say, well, the altar call will be over and it'll be dismissed. And I can just go on. No, no, God is giving you a warning tonight. You need those same hands that helped me. You need them to go into your heart. But brother Sam, you don't know what that person did. I don't care. They got Jesus and they led him like a lamb to the slaughter. And he didn't say a word. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And we need to open that well of love and forgiveness. Abrir ese pozo de amor y de perdón. Y pedirle, Señor, yo quiero abrir ese pozo antiguo. Cuando amaba. Cuando sentí ese perdón. Cuando sentí ese, ese amor con, con mis hermanos. Don't tell me it can't happen. I lived through it for four years and I was miserable. It's just something that's always there. It's always there. Always there. And the Lord can free you tonight. The Lord can free you. You say, well, Brother Sam, I don't have that problem. Well, praise God. But you may have one tomorrow or next year. And you remember. Dios es
es amor. Dios es amor. Y el que vive amor vi en Dios y Dios en él. Maybe you have to make a phone call tonight. Maybe you have to write a letter today. Or maybe you have to go up to that person. Even if you say, you know what, I'm not sure, but I have felt something that's not right. I just want to remind both of us that I love you and I want you to love me. Let's let God speak to the hearts. Let's let God speak to the hearts. Take out the dirt. Take out the dirt. Take out the dirt. Saca la tierra. Sácala. Y luego, allá abajo. Allá abajo, cuando saques toda la tierra. Sale. Sale el agua. Sale el espíritu de perdón. Sale la frescura. Somos libres. Why don't we come to this altar and stand here and we're all just going to hold our hands and so that it'll be less embarrassing with everybody here. You can go hug one and hug another. But listen to me. Make sure you hug that one that you need to hug if that's the circumstance in your life. Make sure you do it. Because on the way home there's an accident and you don't live and you take that root of bitterness in your heart you will awaken in the pits of hell you will come don't kneel stand vi ven Dios y Dios en el come maybe the ministry can come Dios Take a hold of the, somebody's hand. Take two hands. Amor. Dios es amor. Y el que vive en amor vive en Dios y Dios en él Can you feel the love of God? Dios es amor Saca la tierra hermano Dios pero hablaron mucho de mí saca la tierra pero dijeron saca la tierra pero me humillaron saca la tierra pero le hicieron a mi hijo saca la tierra